by now the nature of amphibious war, a combined land and sea operation against the enemy. Landing craft furnish that vital link between sea and shore, between the transports and the enemy beach. There are several types of landing craft, but all are designed for just one purpose, to carry our troops and equipment into the shore and disembark them in the shortest possible time. We are concerned here with just one of these boats, the LCVP, landing craft, vehicle, and personnel. It's referred to as the VP, and sometimes it's called a Jeep lighter. The VP is a little better than 36 feet in length and has a beam of about 10 feet. It's powered by a diesel engine of 225 horsepower, giving a speed of 10 miles per hour fully loaded, about 14 miles per hour without load. The fuel capacity of the VP allows it to cruise more than 100 miles on a full load of fuel. Its weight is eight and a half tons, and it can carry four tons of cargo. Yet it has a very shallow draft, ranging from about one foot forward to about three feet at the stern. The shallow draft forward makes it possible to drive the VP high up on the beach. The ramp makes fast unloading possible. The four-ton capacity of the VP allows it to carry 36 fully armed men or vehicles ranging from a jeep to a small truck or 8,100 pounds of ammunition or other supplies. Hardly a week goes by without news of the successful employment of landing craft in operations against the enemy. In any one of these operations, the VPs play a big part, a hell of a big part. These boats are coming out of the factories by the thousands. Thousands of boats, thousands of crews needed to run them. To be a good crewman, you've got to know your boat. And you can't learn everything in a minute either. So we'll start right at the beginning. And remember, your close attention here and now will help you learn just that much faster when you're assigned to an LCVP. The LCVP is of wood construction, except for the ramp, which is formed of steel plate, strengthened by steel ribbing on the inside. The sides are armored with steel plate of the same thickness as that used in the ramp. The VP could be called a flat bottom boat but certain features of design differ from conventional flat-bottomed construction. For instance, the peculiar spoon shape of the bow, which makes it possible to drive the boat well up on the beach. And this part of the bottom is plenty rugged, built to stand up under hard, punishing use. The dark sections are called scuffle boards. They take the wear and tear of scraping across the beach. The keel-like part, running from amidships to stern, is called the skeg. The salt water intake for the cooling system is located on this side of the bottom. The skeg is supported aft by a strut, which also supports the shaft and propeller. An extension aft of the skeg, called the rudder support, gives added strength to the rudder assembly. Just forward of the propeller is a second, smaller rudder, called the pilot rudder, which moves in step with the main rudder and adds to its effect. The bottom at the stern is of semi-tunneled construction. Its purpose can best be shown by looking at a boat on the beach. Notice first that the skeg takes the weight of the stern, protecting the propeller and rudder. The tunneled construction permits the propeller to be mounted higher than would otherwise be possible. In this way, the propeller gets a full bite even in a minimum amount of water. Let's take a look inside the LCVP. You will note that more than half the overall length is taken up by the forward compartment where troops, cargo, or equipment is carried. Floorboards in the bottom give access to the bilges for inspection and cleaning. The sling used in hoisting the boat is stowed beneath these boards. A rack for convenient life jacket stowage is installed on the port side. The engine compartment is not quite so simple. The diesel engine, engine controls, steering controls, and most of the boat fittings are located in this space. The wheel and the engine controls are abreast of the engine housing 
on the port side of the boat. Say, uh, engineer, help us out here a minute, will you? To the right of the wheel is the shift lever. It's in neutral now. Moving the arm forward puts the engine in forward gear. All the way back puts it in reverse. This same lever serves as a throttle. Turning it to the left increases the speed. All the way right reduces the engine to idling speed. Releasing this stop allows the lever to be turned to the off position, cutting off the fuel supply and stopping the engine. At the operator's side of the wheel stand are additional controls. The light switches, the starter button and the heater button used only when making cold weather starts. A tachometer showing engine revolutions per minute. Full primer pump also used in making cold weather starts. On the combing, just forward of the wheel, are two compasses. They aid the operator in holding his course when visibility is low. At the top, an electric compass repeater connected to the Magnuson compass. Just below it, a small magnetic compass. One thing more, in order to give the operator a clear view over the high ramp forward, the wheel may be raised. Thanks, mate. On the opposite side of the engine, starboard side, is the winch for raising and lowering the ramp. Just forward of the winch is the engine gauge panel, showing water temperature, lubricating oil temperature, oil pressure, and rate of charge of the batteries. Still forward is the battery stowage and a hand bilge pump for use in case the power-driven pump should fail. Aft on the starboard side, beneath the decked over part of the stern, is a second hand bilge pump. This pump also serves as a primer for the salt water cooling system. Occasionally, when first starting up, the engine driven pump may fail to get suction. A few strokes on this hand pump will prime it and restore salt water circulation. This decked over section aft is called a transom. Two gun pits are provided and in action, a 30 caliber machine gun is mounted on each side. Between the gun pits is a pad eye and ring for use when hoisting the boat with a davit. Farther aft is the Samson post where the towing line is secured when taking another boat in tow. The cover plates for the fuel tank inlets, one on each side, each tank of approximately 100 gallons capacity. The protective cover which houses the Magnuson compass and a cover plate which gives access to the rudder post. An emergency tiller can be inserted here in case of failure of the steering system. Ventilators are mounted aft on the transom to prevent fuel vapors from collecting around the fuel tanks and a cleat on each side for securing the boat lines. A splashboard can be mounted here on the transom. The purpose of this splashboard is to provide protection from the waves when the boat is backed out through the surf. That uh, pretty well covers the boat and its principal fittings. Now let's look into the matter of boat equipment. The equipment carried may vary according to conditions of service or climate. Most of the items here are essential and should be found in every well-equipped VP. First, 50 fathoms of three-inch anchor line coiled so as to be free for running, and a 30-pound anchor, a grapnel with 15 fathoms of line, life jackets for all hands, a crank for the ramp winch. To avoid the possibility of loss, this crank must be secured near the winch with a strong lanyard. A pair of boat hooks are provided for each boat. Four fenders, two for each side. Also a bow line, stern line, and an eight fathom towing line. A pair of jiggers used for raising the ramp in case the cable or winch should fail. And of course, boat buckets and the inevitable swab. A tool kit for engine and general repairs. 
small gear such as this is stowed in the boat box. A battle lantern, a pair of semaphore flags, and an answering pennant. A 15-pound chemical fire extinguisher, mounted in a rack alongside the engine housing. A fuel measuring rod to gauge the fuel in the tanks aft. Two life rings. Next, and this is very important, a five-gallon can of oil of the specified weight for engine lubrication. And five gallons of fresh water for the engine cooling system. Two water breakers for drinking water are provided for each VP. And the emergency tiller. This is stowed in the engine compartment. But this man is no dope. He wants to be sure that it fits. That right, fella? All right, we've got a boat and the necessary gear. How about the crew? Usually, four men are assigned to each LCVP. The coxswain, the engineer, the stern man, and the bow man. The man assigned as operator, regardless of his rating, is called the coxswain. He is in charge of the boat and the crew, and is responsible for carrying out all the orders and regulations pertaining to the boat. A good coxswain takes real pride in his ability to handle his boat correctly and smartly at all times. And he takes care to see that the boat is clean and ship -shaped, with all gear properly stowed. The engineer has received special training in the care of and repairs to boat engines. His main job is to keep that engine in top operating condition. On the run into the beach and on the return to the transport, the bow man handles the starboard machine gun. The stern man handles the port machine gun. When the VP nears the beach, the bow man goes forward and stands by to handle the ramp safety clamps. On order, he releases the clamps. The engineer handles the ramp winch. When the ramp is raised, the stern man assists the engineer. The stern man also acts as signal man and must be proficient in flag and blinker signals. Of course, all hands are concerned with boat cleaning and upkeep in addition to these special duties. The duties of the various members of the crew are, of necessity, completely interchangeable. There's just one exception. Because special training is required to make repairs to the engine, other boat crew members are not required to be able to perform all the duties of the engineer. However, each man in the crew must be able to act as coxswain, as signalman, or as gunner. Yes, it's a good boat. It has good equipment. Add a good crew, and you have an effective amphibious unit.